Hello YouTube, my name is Terry, and my YouTube moniker is Jesus Lives 888 and I just wanted to get on here for a minute and tell you a little bit about what I felt like the Lord showed me during the recent eclipse of August 21st, 2017. I have some notes here so I'll be looking down occasionally. Uh, first I want to give you a little bit of the backstory. Um, the backstory begins about 12 years ago when a friend of mine who is an evangelist said that the Lord told him to go to the four corners of the United States and blow his shofar. A shofar can be a spiritual instrument when it's blown under the anointing and direction of the Lord. So my friend did this. He went to uh, Maine, Florida, Washington State, and California and blew his shofar. And when he completed that task, um, he said the Lord told him that someday he would tell him to go to the center of the United States to blow his shofar. And by the way, he said it took him 33 days and he went through 33 states to go to the four corners of the United States. So we met him about six years after he did his four corners tour of blowing his shofar. And when we met him, he asked us, my husband and I, if we would like to go with him someday um, when he goes to the center of the United States. And we said, yes, we would. So about every year after that, I would call him and ask him if, if that was the year that the Lord told him to go. And of course, every year he would say no until this year. Um, in January of 2017, I called him and he said that the Lord had told him that this was the year that he was to go blow the shofar in the center of the United States. So we went to Lebanon, Kansas, and blew our shofars and prayed for a spiritual outpouring in the United States. Then, um, after we were home about two weeks, uh, my husband started wondering what was the center of our state. And he looked it up and found that the center of our state is also a town called Lebanon, which that seemed really odd. <laughs> And so he researched it to see if there were any other states that had Lebanon as the center of their state. And he didn't find any other states except our state. So then we prayed and asked the Lord, should we go to Lebanon, Kentucky, and pray for our state? And within a few hours, the Lord answered that prayer in a pretty supernatural, miraculous way. So we were left with little doubt that that's what we should do. So we went to Lebanon, Kentucky, the center of our state, and did the same thing. We blew our shofars and prayed. I prayed for revival and spiritual outpouring and for our nation. Then I found out that the eclipse was going to be happening this summer and that the place of longest duration of the eclipse was Hopkinsville, Kentucky, and that's where most people wanted to go. Uh, there would be a hundred percent totality there, plus it would last the longest, and of course I wanted to go there, but I thought about the large crowds and everything, and I thought that it just might be too crowded to go, so I started trying to think of a different place to go to watch the eclipse from. And I started looking around for another town that would also have 100% totality. And I found that about 100 miles southeast of Hopkinsville is a town that's about the same distance from where I live that is experiencing the 100% totality. And so I thought uh, that might be a good option. And when I looked at the name of this little town, I was surprised to find that it was also called Lebanon, Tennessee. That made the third time this summer that the Lord had brought a town called Lebanon to our attention. So we wondered if maybe we should go to Lebanon, Tennessee to watch the eclipse, if that may be what the Lord was telling us. Uh, Lebanon, Kansas being the center of the United States, Lebanon, Kentucky, the center of Kentucky, and now Lebanon, Tennessee, the center of the eclipse, uh, where 100% totality can be viewed. So I thought about, you know, going there. And so we prayed about it, but I never really felt like God particularly said to go there. So then the day before the eclipse, um, we had a phone call from a friend of ours who invited us to go watch the eclipse with them. And they had recently uh, purchased a mountain, and they wanted to uh, hike up the mountain and watch the eclipse from on top of that mountain. So... Uh, 
we said yes we would go with them and so we drove part of the way and then we got out of the truck and hiked the rest of the way up this steep mountain and as I was walking up the mountain I started thinking about how often um, climbing a mountain is used as a analogy to getting closer to God uh, for example Moses had to climb Mount Sinai to get close enough to God to commune with him and get his instructions which was the law um, Exodus thirty one eighteen says when the Lord finished speaking to Moses on Mount Sinai he gave him the two tablets of the covenant law the tablets of stone inscribed by the finger of God so uh, it seemed to me as we were climbing this mountain that the still small voice was telling me and reminding me that this would be representative of climbing God's mountain, getting spiritually closer to God. And climbing that mountain that we climbed was very uh, difficult and hard. And so I think God was saying that I should not expect anything different when climbing his spiritual mountain to get closer to him that it would in fact be difficult and hard, um, which really to me boils down to more praying, more fasting, more studying, and more sacrifices of the flesh. And on top of the mountain there was a huge, big, beautiful rock um, with an arch under it, and we watched the eclipse from on top of that rock. And then after returning home, I noticed a passage that said while Moses was up on Mount Sinai, the mountain of Sinai, that God also told him to stand on a rock. From Exodus chapter 33, verses 18 through 22, uh, Moses said, Now show me your glory. And then the Lord said, There is a place near me where you may stand on a rock, and when my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock and cover you with my hand until I pass by. And uh, when we were watching the eclipse, the moon covered the glory of the sun while the sun passed by. So the moon sort of represented the Lord's hand um, that covered his glory for Moses when he passed by. I thought that was kind of interesting. Another Bible passage that speaks of having to climb a mountain to get closer to God is where Jesus led his closest disciples up on a high mountain so they could experience his glory. In Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 and 2, it says, After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up on a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. In other words, they experienced God's glory in a very special way. So I think the Lord is telling us that we need to climb higher with him in order to get more instruction and to experience his glory in a special way and that we should not shun the difficulty and discomfort of the spiritual mountain climbing journey. I believe he's calling all of us higher. So I guess we better dig out our spiritual hiking shoes and spiritual backpacks and map out our plan. I think God was definitely speaking to people through the eclipse. Uh, we know that one purpose the sun was given was for a sign. Genesis chapter 1 verses 14 through 16 says, And God said, Let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years. And let, let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light on earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. And I looked up the definition of the sun and found that it is really just a star that has planets revolving around it. That's the definition of a sun, a star with planets revolving around it. I believe the sun is the physical representation of the S-O-N, sun. Jesus called himself the bright and morning star. And of course, the brightest star in the morning is the sun. Revelation 22, verse 16 says, I am the root and the offspring of David, and the bright and morning star. In other words, he's the sun. Um, I think one of the things the eclipse represented was God's glory. 
when Jesus was transfigured in front of his disciples, it says his face shone like the sun. As I mentioned before, Matthew 17, 2 says, There he was transfigured before him, his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. Also, we know a special star appeared at Jesus' birth. I think that was God's way of letting us know that the star was a representation of Jesus, who was the bright and morning star. Second uh, Peter chapter 1, verse 19 speaks of Jesus being the morning star. It says, We also have the message of the prophets, which has been confirmed beyond doubt. And you will do well to pay attention to this message as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns, which means until the sun comes up, and the morning star rises in your hearts. I think God's glory passed by, figuratively speaking, uh, in that eclipse, the sun passed by. In other words, God was making his presence known. And the, the Lord had told Elijah to go stand on a mountain because the Lord was going to pass by. And then the Lord had us to go stand on a mountain because the eclipse, representing God's glory, was about to pass by. And when I got home, I started thinking about how I had wanted to see the spectacular effects of the eclipse, the 100% totality and the darkness and the stars and all that excitement. And I was a little bit disappointed. But then it occurred to me that Elijah had wanted to see all the spectacular effects of God. And uh, I'll read this to you in First Kings chapter 19, verses 11 through 13. And, and the Lord said to Elijah, Go out and stand on a mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. And behold, the Lord passed by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a still, small voice. And it was so, when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering of the cave. And so, like, Elijah wanted to see God in the spectacular winds and earthquakes and all these things. He really just ended up hearing the Lord in a still, small voice. And I wanted to see the Lord in the spectacular eclipse with the darkness and the stars, but I ended up just hearing a still, small voice, just like Elijah did. Um, so I thought that was kind of encouraging that the Lord... Um, showed me that he spoke to me anyway, even though I didn't get to go see the 100% totality. So I think the point that the Lord was making to me is that he wants me to climb his spiritual mountain in order to see his glory in a more spectacular way and to get instruction from him. And that climbing the spiritual mountain is going to be very difficult. It will require great sacrifices of the flesh, prayer, fasting, studying, and other sacrifices of the flesh, just any sin in your life that you can rid yourself of, try to rid yourself of it. But I don't think the Lord's just calling me. I think he's calling all of his church to climb the spiritual mountain, to get closer to him. I believe it's time for us to do that. It's the month of Elul right now on the Hebrew calendar, which is the month of repentance. I think now is the time that we all need to be putting on our spiritual climbing boots and backpacks and and climbing God's spiritual mountain. So I just wanted to invite anyone that would like to do that with me um, to do that. I think what the Lord has showed my husband and I to do is something called the 40-Day Miracle. You can look that up online. And it goes in conjunction with um, a 42-day uh, diet and fasting program called do42.com. So you can look those up. I'll try to put the links below. And also I'm going to put a link below of another lady who made a video. Um, I, I watch her quite often. And um, she seemed, the Lord seemed to show her similar things that he showed me about climbing God's spiritual mountain. So the Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So she can maybe confirm the words that I've had 
because I found her video uh, a week or so after um, the clips, although she had made it before. But it seemed to confirm some of the things that the Lord showed me. So anyway, um, if this encourages you, I hope uh, you let me know. Or um, I just hope it helps you get closer to the Lord. Thank you and have a good evening. Bye-bye.